In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the sternocleidomastoid muscle and we're gonna see exactly why it's such a pain in the neck. A long time ago, back when I was an infantry Marine in the United States Marine Corps, I was at a training event and it was all about, you know, like, you know, combat situations and how to treat people for combat type injuries. And I remember we were, we were all huddled around a Navy corpsman, which for the Marine Corps is basically like a medic. And that medic, so that corpsman, he looks at, he looks at this group of like 19 year old Marines and he's like, Hey, you guys want to hear a really big word? And we all just like lean forward in anticipation. And he says, sternocleidomastoid. And I'm not even joking. It sent, it sent shockwaves through this crowd of 19 year old kids. We were all like, what is that? That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. And <laughs> I can't help but laugh at it now because it's like, it's, it is a big word. Um, it's just not as intimidating, um, as it once was because once you actually figure out, you know, like, okay, well, what is this muscle? What is it attaching to? And like how to say its name, it actually becomes pretty easy to say. It's fun to say, and it's very descriptive, right? The, the, the name sternocleidomastoid tells you a ton about this muscle. And so that's our focus for today. We're going to, we're going to investigate this muscle you can see here called the sternocleidomastoid. And we're going to also see that, um, it has some really interesting implications for just modern times. I, and because there is a very good chance that your sternocleidomastoid is tight and it's tight because, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. So let's look at this muscle. And so we have, um, a lateral view on the right side of the neck here. And so what we can see is you can see kind of like the, you know, the jawline, you can see that mandible. You can see what's cool is if you look at the image, we have a portion of the ear right here. Um, but then you can also see inside of the external acoustic meatus. So that's like the, the ear canal, um, that auditory canal. But what you'll also notice is that this is where the sternocleidomastoid is inserting. So insertion, if you recall, insertion is all about the end of the muscle that's doing the most of the movement. And so when you think about it, well, I mean, because typically like your mind wants to look at this, go, oh, this is the origin. Not really, right? because this is the end that is going to be moving or doing most of the movement. So that means down here is actually going to be our origin. And that also means we are going to have two origins. But this right here is what's called the mastoid process. And I really encourage you to find your own. Just don't poke too hard because it will not feel great. But if you find kind of like your ears and then you just kind of go right behind them, there is this bump. There's just this bump right there on the side that is your mastoid process of the temporal bone. And the sternocleidomastoid is going to attach to it. I mean, it's in its name, mastoid, right? Sternocleidomastoid. And so that is going to be part of our insertion, but it's also then gonna kind of project um, towards the back and it's heading towards what's called the nuchal line. And the nuchal line is another really important landmark that other muscles like trapezius are going to attach to. But if we follow it down, we can see that it's also starting to split. And that is because the sternocleidomastoid muscle has two straps to it. One of them is going to be going to the sternum and one of them is going to be going to the clavicle. And in fact, we can kind of switch over here and you can also get this alternative view of it, which I think is really, really cool. So as you can see, we kind of stripped away all the rest of the anatomy and you can just see this muscle, but you get a great view. This is an anterior view of, we can see this belly, this strap of the muscle coming over and attaching to the sternum. Now, Specifically, this is the portion of the sternum called the manubrium. So if you think of like, um, I, I always think of the sternum as being kind of like a necktie. So you have like the knot and then you have like the long portion. So the knot would be the manubrium. And you can even see like this little intersection here as the manubrium would be turning into what's called the body. So the sternocleidomastoid is going to originate on the manubrium. And then you can also see part of it is coming from the clavicle. Um, it's, this is more about like the medial third or so of the clavicle and then it's kind of coming across here. But now you can kind of make perfect sense of why it's called sternocleidomastoid, right? We have sterno in reference to the attachment at the manubrium and then clido is in reference to the clavicle. And then we can see it coming all the way up here and again attaching at the mastoid process. So sternocleidomastoid, perfect. It, it doesn't get any better than that. So if we're to figure out then, okay, well, what does this muscle do? It's actually pretty simple. So um, if we come over here, you have to picture that 
at this attachment here, right? We're talking at that insertion. That is also very close to obviously the upper cervical spine. So we're talking like C1, C2. And so what it's going to do is have an action where the occipital bone, which is like the base of your skull, is actually interacting with C1, also known as the atlas. And so that joint, the atlanto-occipital joint, I like to call it the uh-huh joint because it does this. Uh-huh. It's like a gentle nod. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's it's a very subtle thing. You just get this tiny little bit of extension and flexion. Tiny little, I don't even know if you can see that. Flexion, extension. That is the action that is happening at the atlanto-occipital joint. And what's going to happen is sternocleidomastoid is going to kick your neck at that atlanto-occipital joint into extension. So we're going to see that it's going to extend. But then what it's also going to do is flex the rest of the joints in the cervical spine. So like a lot of times when I'm with my students and I'm writing on this board, I'm like, sternocleidomastoid does extension and flexion. And I, I first just leave it like that. And then you have this like moment where everyone's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. How can a muscle do opposing actions? And that's what we have to understand is that it's doing one action at the atlanto-occipital and then it's going to flex forward. However, we also need to understand that what we're really talking about here, actually, we'll go back this way, we'll get to that image, um, is going to be what's called a bilateral contraction. And you always need to like ask yourself when you're talking about skeletal muscles, you know, when it comes to action, it, are both sides contracting or what if only one side contracts? Because what I just described, this extension and then flexion of the neck, that only happens if both sides of the muscle are contracting at the same time. So then we can ask ourselves, well, what would happen if only one side, right? That's a unilateral contraction. Well, let's look at this right here. So you can see the strap coming down and you can see that it's clearly at an angle. But we also still have this strap coming down here towards the clavicle that is going to be, you know, very vertically oriented. So if you picture in your mind's eye, right, I want you, this is what I always want to tell my students is like, hey, look, Try to picture this in your mind and have point A and point B get closer together and see if you can kind of work out for yourself what this muscle is going to do. And so what you're going to have is if this side contracts, you are going to still get flexion of the neck based on that clavicular attachment. That just makes sense, right? You're still going to get flexion of the neck. But based on this um, sternal attachment, it is going to rotate the head and neck and this is kind of strange, to the opposite side. So what I mean by that is, let's say like, so right, like I'm showing you, like this is my right sternocleidomastoid. If my right sternocleidomastoid contracts unilaterally, I rotate to the left. If my left sternocleidomastoid contracts unilaterally, I rotate to the right. That is what's known as a contralateral contraction or contralateral rotation. So what we're saying here is contralateral just means the muscles on this side, but it kind of forces you to the other side. That is a function of the sternocleidomastoid from a unilateral contraction. And again, we can kind of see that here um, as well. Like you can kind of just picture like what, what's really cool when you see it with all the rest of the anatomy on there is you can see like you can see nerves um, you can see blood vessels you can see like hyoids like omohyoid coming in here that it's also kind of like I don't know how I'm gonna try to <laughs> it's sloped right? the, the muscle itself is sloped um, and that's also going to help with just that glide as it goes into that contralateral rotation to the other side but another really interesting thing about the sternocleidomastoid is what's deep to it and you can see it here so everyone knows where their sternocleidomastoid is, but they probably have never just really thought about it. And that's because in order to you know, feel the pulse in the common carotid artery, you have to push gently into the sternocleidomastoid because you can see like the jugular, right? We're talking about like the external jugular um, and then the, uh, you know, the right common carotid. You can see those are actually going to be deep to it. And so you have to push through the muscle in order to feel that pulse. 
that is going to be an essential component, uh, or not essential component, but that's just going to tell you where this muscle is. It's just going to be in the anterior side of the neck. But what's also interesting is if we like kind of like flip it over, you can see that there's also, you know, there's different nerves. There's different nerves and bundles that are going to be underneath here coming from like the cervical plexus. Um, you know, it's cool. I love this image because you can see if you're looking closely, you can see the skull. You can see the gray matter, you can see the white matter, you can see the brainstem turning into the medulla, right? So the pons turn into the medulla of the spinal cord. And you can see all of these rootlets and roots and this, the peripheral nervous system kind of branching out to going into the supplying, uh, the sternocleidomastoid. So there's a lot of, there's a dense amount of anatomy all underneath it. And so it's one of my favorite dissections to make is when you actually cut the sternocleidomastoid and just flip it up it's 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 amazing the amount of anatomy that is just going to be deep to it. It's just like woo, and you reveal a tremendous amount of it. Just absolutely fascinating, fascinating to see. But so the sternocleidomastoid is a really fascinating muscle. So what does it do? So like, why is this mo relevant to us in modern times? Well, I want you to think through this, right? So it's going to extend the head at the occipital joint, and then it's going to flex the neck at the intercervical joints. What does this remind you of? Text neck, right? Um, we have a, we actually have a term for this it's called text neck. Uh, um, I'm now, what's interesting is, you know, I think we've been doing this long before texting because like picture yourself driving, your neck is in that position. Picture yourself at your computer, your neck is in that position. But we're seeing clinically um, text neck to be more relevant where people are just locked into this position because we're all just on our phones. We're all just, you know, doing that type of thing. We're all like this. We have terrible posture. All that stuff is um, feeding into this chronically tight sternocleidomastoid. So, I mean, again, you can feel this muscle too. You can just kind of pinch it on the sides very lightly. Um, and who knows? It might feel like, you know, steel rods in your neck. And that would just suggest, hey, maybe you're spending a little bit too long on your phone. I don't know. Not, no judgment, but that could be what's going on. But hopefully, you know, you really enjoyed today's video. You know, everything that you saw here is 100% free. It's in um, one of our articles. I'll kind of show you what we can see here. You can even see like a cadaveric dissection. Our articles here on KenHub are 100% free. You can even see some awesome cross sections. You can see, uh, you know, the arteries and the, the oh, it says the carotid sheath, but you can see like the artery, you can see the veins. So I really encourage you to explore this. Um, it's really, really exciting to see. We're going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description below so you can go ahead and just check out this entire article yourself. Um, and while you're down there though, why don't you go ahead and leave us a comment about what structures you would like us to cover in the future and just get a kind of better understanding of it. And while you're also down there, why don't you just also hit the like button because a simple thing like that actually goes a really long way in helping this video get in front of other people so everyone can start learning and understanding their body better than they have in the past. But thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video.